Let's look at what was called, again back in the 30s, the transmission chain. So we have a series of boxes, mic in the studio, mixer, uh, mic out mixer, going out to an aerial. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, these were all coupled by transformers. Let's take a little close look at what happens in here. The first is that the impedance of that is 600 ohms or an omega symbol. Why 600 ohms? Well the reason is that that is very close to the natural impedance of twisted screened audio cable and if we add a fader in here which I'm going to just stick in here a typical old style fader would be a 600 ohm constant impedance fader because it's very important when you're using this technique that you don't destroy that technology or that theory of 600 ohms and to do it properly I'm going to put a transformer before it and a transformer out after it and I'll just connect that up there there's our 600 ohm constant impedance fader so the signal going that way always sees 600 ohms because this has got studs in it to make sure it always is 600 ohms and the impedance looking that way from the amplifier is 600 ohms. That will maintain um, not only the impedance but also the frequency response being 30 I've paused here because I'm still trying to get used to change in terminology. We used to call that 30 cycles when I grew up. It's now called 30 hertz. I'll just put 30 there. It's the same now, you know, when people talk about reverb. Um, back in the 60s, it was echo. Um, let's have a bit more echo on this. And then people got very, very particular and they said no no echo is a repeat of the original sound whereas reverb is continuation of the sound so what comes out of your acoustic echo chamber or your or your plate is a continuation not echo so the word echo now is forbidden anyhow back to the point here back to something like 15,000 cycles or kilohertz if we use a higher impedance here than 600 ohms, the first thing that happens is that you get some capacitance between the two, cable, the two wires in here. So it's like having a capacitor on the output there. So your frequency response will start to roll off. The next thing that happens with a transformer, of course, is that you get insertion loss. Another good reason for not using transformers. My answer is make up that insertion loss in an amplifier. Distortion. This guys is the big one. Transformers introduce distortion. Yes, but then so does everything else. The great thing about the distortion here, and let me just demonstrate this to you. I'm going to take that off because you can remember all that. I'm not very good at drawing but that's a sine wave. When you get overload and you always do get overload, for instance I imagine not many of you do this but if you're recording say timps 
and the car is just doing a little quiet bit here and then suddenly bang that is something like an increase of 50 or maybe more dB. Now any amplifier is going to distort. That's a fact of life. What we have to deal with here is to how to minimise the effects of that distortion. The distortion might be one of two kinds. We might get a distortion which is like that, where that and that is called clipping. And this happens when the voltage in an amplifier tries to exceed the supply voltage or the supply voltage at that particular component in the amplifier. There are three, there are three classes of amplifier. There's class A, there's class AB, and there's class B. That's a separate little lecture on its own. If you have a solid state amplifier and you try to exceed the voltage of that particular point, it will clip. And this distortion here is very nasty. It's the kind of distortion that makes your ears buzz, it makes you feel sick. Um, uh, you get very tired listening to that kind of sound. The great thing about a transformer when it distorts is it sort of does this. That's probably more accurate to one than that. In other words, it, it, it sort of gets compressed a bit and you don't get these edges. Another reason for using transformers. Another disadvantage of transformers is called ringing. If we have a square wave, like that, at say 1000 cycles or hertz, and that goes through a transformer, and there's more about square wave testing in the design notes uh, section on the website. It goes like that. And that is called ringing or overshoot. In other words, the signal goes up, but there's not sufficient damping to stop it carrying on. It's a bit like a loudspeaker. Um, uh, sound will make the cone, say, go forward. But unless the signal is damped, once the sound stops, the cone will carry on moving. That's a similar thing here damping or ringing. All transformers will ring to a degree and there are a number of techniques to stop it. The most popular is there's your feedback resistor and you put a very small capacitor across it and that will dampen that. If you do it too much you'll finish up with a waveform like this where that is sharp, but that is curved. If we look at the frequency response of this, you'll find that it'll go up before it goes down. Frequency response here is it tails off far too soon. If you're not careful, you'll find that tail off at about 12,000 cycles.